Hello, this is Danny at DEG. I want to thank you for joining me for this week's estimating tip. Before we begin, I want to thank our sponsors and our supporters for making this possible free of charge to our industry. So again, a big thank you to our sponsors and our supporters. This week's estimating tip is a pretty cool feature in Mitchell Ultramate that I've been uh, kind of that I've been referencing more and more during the repair planning process. So when decoding a VIN, you pull up the vehicle information chapter here, you'll see that uh, when you get to the main screen right here, you'll see that there's a couple new categories that you may not uh, be familiar with or may not see in the past. And that's to do with some of the information that the more and more OEMs are starting to provide to the information providers when it comes down to repair information um, or position statements of doing safe and proper repairs. So right now, when you uh, decode the VIN and pull up the vehicle uh, chapter, you'll see in the special cautions group, you may see some additional information, whether it be for the SRS systems or seat belts, uh, suspension or aluminum group. And a great example would be if you uh, pull up the seatbelt uh, precaution, you'll see right here in the notes that Ford recommends that all seatbelt assemblies in use during a collision be replaced unless the collision was minor and a qualified technician finds that the seatbelts show no damage and continue to operate properly. Seatbelt assemblies not in use should also be inspected and replaced if damage or improper operation is noted. So this is a really good uh, tip right here. Uh, so when you get a vehicle, a Ford vehicle in your repair shop, uh, you want to reference any of these special cautions notes. So that way the repair planner can then reference the OEM information to verify that's exactly what the vehicle needs. So from a starting point, this helps the repair planner do some uh, forward thinking to see what else may be required or needed to perform a safe and proper repair. Another area the, that I get commonly asked is um, in Mitchell uh, product is where can I find some of the uh, parts or like the, the fasteners used in the repair process, uh, like doing a bedside or like doing an outer structural skin, uh, like a, uh, on the cab, like a cab corner, or the roof, uh, things of that nature. So I uh, started to see right here in Mitchell Ultramate, if you select the fasteners group right here, you'll see that Mitchell does provide some of the part numbers and uh, information for like the bonding adhesive right here when he selected it as well as some of the rivets that, that are being uh, used in the repair process. Now again, it's uh, the repair is still required to verify which correct parts are to be used in the repair manual, but this this right here, this fastener section, may, may alleviate having to perform those uh, manual entries or the common 900-500 operation of doing a manual line. So really helpful having this information right here under the fasteners and as well as a special cautions group. Now for our painters out there, we all have come across times where uh, when we're working on a vehicle, we just cannot find the paint code. It's in, you know, different places or, you know, due to the brands that we work on, you know, it's just all over the place. So Mitchell made it pretty easy right here. Uh, if the uh, information is, you know, uh, verified by the manufacturer, um, Mitchell will uh, sometimes even list a paint code location. So like on this Ford right here, you'll see that there's a note right here that it's located on the left front door frame area. And we all know that once it's on the door frame, reference the VIN label and you'll find that PNT code. So pretty cool uh, information for our painters in the group right here that are looking for the paint uh, code location. Last thing I get questioned um, and asked about all the time, you know, at the DEG is what about OEM position statements? And you'll see us commonly respond back to the um, uh, to the users, you know, reference you know OEM one stop or uh, reach out to the RTS team at ICAR. But again, Mitchell has made it um, uh, integrated, uh, depending on the manufacturer, that you might find some of their common position statements right here in this tab right here. So if you select on OEM position statements, you'll see that this is the available position statements that Mitchell has for the OEM. So if you're wanting something regarding the clear coat blending operation not being approved, you select that operation uh, or that link, and it's going to pull up an actual position statement directly from the OEM uh, on, on their letterhead advising why clear coat blending procedure is not an approved step. If we want to see something about the uh, remanufacturing or reconditioning process of aluminum or steel wheels, you can click on this link right here. And again, on a Ford uh, letterhead, you will have an OEM position statement advising why these uh, process or this repair pro uh, operation is not recommended or 
when should it be done depending on the condition of the, uh, the wheel itself. So great helpful information right here available in the OEM position statement. Again, if any of the information you find in here uh, doesn't seem to be accurate or uh, outdated, you know, reach out to us at the DEG and we can definitely work with uh, the information provider to get that corrected and updated. But again, I just want to share where you can find some of this information when uh, people are using uh, Ultramate Mitchell. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us at the DEG, uh, www.degweb.org. And for more information on be being a sponsor or supporter, again, reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to uh, discuss any uh, questions you have about it and how you can help the industry as well. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.